you take a look at a vestibule teardrop trailer like these ones at the factory in Minnesota where I totally am right now, you realize very quickly that this is a product that's built by a guy with a very creative mind. Hey, vestibulers, Steve McClellan here. And you know, I wanted to get inside that mind a little bit. You see, Bert Taylor has sometimes been called the Steve Jobs of teardrops because Steve Jobs famously had a story where he polished both the inside and the outside of the aluminum cases on his first iPhones, even though nobody was ever going to see the inside of the case. If you remove a piece of wood from the inside of a vestibule, like this one that I'm standing in front of, you'll see that it's finished on the inside and the outside, just like that iPhone case. This is a trait, even a culture, that Bert has instilled in his employees, and that all goes into building this incredible product. At the recent Vestibule Rally in Forestville Mystery Cave State Park, where I'm standing right in front of the sign, actually right now, I got an opportunity to sit down and talk to that creative mind and find out a little bit of what goes into building these trailers. I need to know, you are the founder, you're the designer, you're the creator, you're the inventor of the vestibule. What do we call you? I don't know. You can call me whatever All you want. All of those? Just you... don't call me late for lunch. <laughs> you wear a lot of hats, though. Yes. Okay, fair enough. And what do we call, what I like to call, the mothership, the nest? Somebody else called it the nest. The home office, the factory. What do we call that? Uh, I guess call it the shop. Okay, the shop. I like it. Simple, easy. Or it's studio. How about that? The studio. I like that. You show off your vestibules there. Yeah. All right, everybody, Steve McClelland here with Burt Taylor, the founder, owner, inventor, creator, and all of the above of the Vestibule Teardrop Trailer. First of all, congratulations on all this. This weekend is incredible. If you look around you, it's got to be for you like all of your kids coming home from college for the first time. It, it, how do you feel about all this? Well, it's kind of uh, it's scary in, in some respects, but it's also very heartwarming uh, to get all the wonderful comments that uh, we've been getting. Um, I was talking to somebody today about how if you wanted to see somebody's camp set up, you walk by the street and you kind of peek over at it and you might say, hey, could I take a look at your camp table there? I'm interested. But here you can just walk right in, say hello. Isn't that kind of how it's working? Yeah, I, there's, there's, uh, we're kind of part of a club. Uh, uh, I guess when I started this, I, I was thinking, I don't want to be in the, vi in, in the, in the RV business. I, I just didn't, you know, I, I'd like to camp. I'd like to be on an adventure and be kind of solo or just the two of us uh, uh, off somewhere. And I just didn't think that the social aspect of RVing was what I wanted to be involved with. But, and, and I, act, I don't think that vestibulers uh, are really into that either. But given uh, you know a situation like this, a, a rally where pe vestibulers actually get to um, uh, mingle with vestibulers, yeah. uh, there is a, a, a really wonderful social aspect to it. Um, and I don't think you get that when you're off on your own adventure. But um, uh, you know, I think anybody that that has uh, probably an airstream or a base camp or a, a, you know a, a camp in or little guy. When they get together, they have something really unique in common, and uh, so I'm very happy to be part of that. And, yeah, uh, it's a, it's a real a perk. Um, beside building them, to have this whole culture that surrounds yeah. it, and the enthusiasm by the by the uh, vestibule owners, uh, it's something I didn't anticipate. Mm -hmm. So you built your first trailer to scratch your own itch to say I need something to go out and take the family out camping, maybe not the family, you're not cramming everybody in there, but at least you and Gretchen going out camping. And you've been doing this for 10 years, nine years? Eight years. Eight years, years, okay. 2011 when was when I started, okay. uh, uh, September, that's when I started thinking about it. But um, I didn't uh, didn't build the first one to scratch my own itch. I, no. I uh, actually, I was spending our nest egg and I, I had I knew I was going to be broke in, in uh, you know in a few years so I had to I had to start another business and uh, okay and I had been interested in 
vintage trailers, Shastas, canned hams, yeah. um, uh, Airstream, uh, Silver Streaks. And so that was very uh, interesting to me. I didn't know anything about uh, this uh, teardrops at the time, but once I found that out, then I was like, oh, that's like that's small enough yeah. like a piece of furniture where I think I could accomplish that. I got to tell you, I wanted to do what you do. And I have some background in furniture building, cabinet making, laminates, electrical. Mm -hmm. like maybe I can pull this off. And you know, the business and everything. And I thought about it for about two minutes. <laughs> and I said, I don't want to do that. It seems like the kind of business where you've got to have, you're juggling and you've got to have like a hundred balls in the air at the same time. How do you, how do you keep those balls in the air? Well, I start with one ball. <laughs> <laughs> one at a time. Yeah, and then I start, then I get the two balls. Uh, and then two balls with one hand. Am I correct though? Is it like that? Are there things going on in all different directions? I don't think that I would have started this if, if I had been if I had been thinking about all of the mm. uh, aspects to it that I would have to be responsible for. But the thing is, is that I in the past I've had a, a, my, a business where I've had one client and I've done hundreds of products for that one client, and none of the products would evolve. They, they were just exactly what they needed, like a sign or a point of purchase display or, or a store or a fixture or something like that. that too. <laughs> and when that client went away, well, I was, I was, um, you know. So you're keeping all the balls in the air out of necessity right now. And that leads me to my next question. Um, you see teardrop companies, if you will, pop up on the internet and start saying, hey, come buy my teardrop. And they've sold three or four, and they're maybe selling two or three a year. One guy, maybe two guys, building them in their garage. What did you do differently? Was it just out of necessity that you kept that business going for eight, nine years now? Well, I knew, like I said, I, I didn't do it because I, I wanted to scratch an itch. I did it because I needed to start a business, and I just and I discovered teardrops, and I and I did a little research, and I found out that other teardroppers teardrop manufacturers were doing a similar thing and it just didn't sound like there was anything anything insurmountable for me to go into this business so um, so I did it as knowing it would be a business and it okay. was and it was important that I have a product that was aesthetically pleasing and I, I wanted it you know I wanted it to be insanely great uh, but whether that I, that was to be seen later, whether whether I could get there, and um, the feedback has been phenomenal. So I feel like I hit hit a sweet spot for uh, what people are looking for with the window and the couch and and um, the big doors and all that stuff. So I feel lucky in that respect. And let's let's talk about the trailer in a minute. I want to ask you one more question about the business, and that is. I see it from the outside as if the business is changing right now because you've got 305, six trailers out there right now. Yeah. And now you're suddenly having to deal with repairs. I'm sure there's people that come in and say, you know, I've been camping a while. I want to put that furnace in or the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. uh, the repair issue's got to be got to be big for you since a lot, so many teardrops are in Minnesota. How's the business changing right now? Well, we. I guess I didn't think about uh, how you know the fact that we would need um, kind of a warranty and repair aspect to the business yeah. but if, but as I you know it wasn't long before I realized that that's going to be a, a big part of the business it's another ball that you have to keep in it, the air yeah and necessity. it's an important thing yeah. to stand when you stand try to stand behind the product is that uh, uh, not only how can we help people who have problems with their trailers but uh, how can we change the trailer so that if they want to add a feature that is, you know, maybe a new feature that we add, how can we make the trailer <coughs> easy? Uh, we can build a trailer with that in mind. And in the past, it was like, oh, now people want refrigerators. Ooh, we, it doesn't, we can't re fit one in there. Well, how can we change the trailer so that in the future we could drop have one, one or not have one? Yeah. And uh, so that's kind of the phase we're in now where we're trying to... Um, make the trailer uh, more almost modular uh, wiring harnesses I uh, already thought it was kind of modular really looking at it but you're making it even more but modular. It, it, it there's some things that are kind of <coughs> you know you come up against it like, oh, why didn't we move that a little bit or change that a bit or make that cabinet easier to install right. uh, after the fact okay so we're still working on that um, 
and, and you know make that change those changes they're, they're minuscule changes and you probably won't notice them um, in, in an in a individual trailer but uh, building when we build them in the shop um, and somebody comes in for a retrofit it, it makes a business a, biz, a, a big difference for us uh, the kind of time that we have to spend on um, sure. and working on those retrofits. Yeah. So. So. <laughs> that Bert, he's such a cut up. But this interview's been going on a while now. So long, in fact, that it's dark out now. And I'm in the desert now. In California, in fact. So long, in fact, that I'm going to go ahead and divide this video up into two parts. And that is the end of the first part. If you want to know what's coming up in the second part, here you go. Uh, I would say it's point nine. Point nine. Yeah. So, you how are the secret plans for the vestibule submarine coming along? Is that am I not supposed to talk about that? He says that uh, trailer five hundred. I have to get a tattoo. That's Is she the, telling you where you have to get the no, tattoo? She hasn't uh, told me that. <laughs> so, go ahead and click like if you like the video, and uh, click subscribe if you're one of those people that subscribes to things, and uh, click that little bell down there if you're a I don't know, a ding-a-ling or whatever. See you in the next video. <laughs> that Bert, he's such a cut-up. <laughs> that Bert, he's such a cut-up. Oh. <laughs> that Bert, he's such a cut-up. <laughs>